Hi, I'm Nathan Winter, Extension Educator with the University of Minnesota. Today we're going to demonstrate how to take a soil sample. But first, why should you take a soil sample? Taking soil samples can help you learn more about soils you are working with and how to optimize growth or production of your desired plants. Soil tests are used to determine the optimum fertilizer rates for crops, gardens, and lawns. By following these recommendations, you can have healthy crops, gardens, or lawns, and prevent nutrient losses to ground or surface waters. To get started, let's talk about the equipment needed to soil sample, how to soil sample, and recommendations for different soil sampling situations. You will need either a soil probe, as you see right here, a regular garden trowel, or a shovel. You will also need a bucket for collecting the subsamples and a sample bag for taking the composite sample for sending to the testing lab. Along with the soil sample, you're going to need to have a soil sampling form. And this will contain your personal information, identifies the sample location, and shows the desired tests for the sample. Today we're out sampling on a home lawn. Betsy is using a soil probe for sampling to a zero to three inch depth on existing lawn. If this were a new lawn that we were starting to fertilize, we would probably go to a zero to six inch depth. For crop production, we usually go to the plow layer, which is usually six to 12 inches in depth for gardens to a six inch depth and for trees 12 inch depth. Betsy is taking her sample and putting it in our bucket and we're calling that one sub sample. You will need to take multiple sub samples from the area to make up your composite sample. Generally, a minimum of 10 sub samples should be taken to give you a good composite sample from the area. Walk in a W pattern to get this representative sample. When sampling large areas, taking more subsamples gives you a better representative sample. Different soils have different features. If you have a field, pasture, or lawn that has hills or low areas, you may want to take subsamples from each of those areas and send in more than one sample. If you are going to send in only one sample, then subsample should be taken proportionally to the type of landscape that you have. So, if you have a landscape that has hills or valleys, you want to subsample proportionally to make sure that you're getting subsamples from each of those areas. That way, your composite sample is a good representation of that whole area. We have now mixed the subsamples into one composite sample, removed the foreign material like rocks, grass, and other materials that will not be tested. Now we are going to fill the appropriate amount into the soil testing bag, seal it, fill out the form, and send to the soil testing laboratory. For further information, contact the University of Minnesota Soils Testing Laboratory, the University of Minnesota Extension, or another accredited soil testing laboratory.